The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to our service online again. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sue Forshaw and I live in the village. I'm retired but I help out here in the parish of St Edward's Castle Donnington and St Nicholas Lockington from time to time. And I'm delighted to say that I'm here leading today's service with our vicar, Reverend Andrew Race, whom I'm sure most of you will know already. We've been spending the last um, four or five weeks exploring the theme of rethinking, rethinking various things, worship, community, well-being. Last week we were thinking about our work and involvement with children and young people. And our subject for this Sunday is rethinking engagement. If you want to follow the order of service with us, you can find it online. Uh, just Google St Edward's Castle Donnington and um, press the button wherever it is, left, right, right or left, and open the order of service. Those of you who get our regular mailings will already have had it uh, delivered to you. But let us remember that we're here to worship God together and so let us just pause for a moment and lift our hearts to worship God together. Loving God, we have come to worship you. We say together, Help us, us to, to pray, pray to you in faith, to, to sing your praise with gratitude, and, and to listen to your word with hope and expectation through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. And the prayer for this Sunday, the prayer that is shared with the whole of the Anglican Communion. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son went about among the crowds and brought healing with his touch. Help us to show his love in your church as we gather together and by our lives as they are transformed into the image of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, as I said at the beginning of our service, we are coming towards the end of our series on rethinking. And each week, Andrew, you ask people to give you some feedback, either by word of mouth or on Facebook or uh, written in. So, perhaps we can start by asking you what we've learned so far from the last few weeks of doing things differently. What do you mean by engagement? What do we mean by engagement? And how do we rethink these various things? So those are all very good questions. But just before I launch into them, I'm just wondering whether I can say a few thank yous because um, people have been so generous and it's been really lovely, the uh, number of people who have fed back to us, it's been really great. But more especially, I'm just so grateful for everybody who has tuned in and engaged with our worship online. It's been really humbling and just so special that, that, that people have found this useful and worthwhile. I also want to kind of thank people who have given me their feedback. As you say, some of it's spoken, some of it is on the email. And, uh, but it's all been really helpful and all of it has been so affirming. Yes. Something has struck a chord, yes. and I just want to uh, thank people for that. If you've not yet given feedback, you're very welcome to do so. Uh, the questions are on our news sheet, which you can find uh, on our website. 
And then lastly, I'm enormously grateful for, to, to everybody who has helped do these, yourself, Bishop Peter, Angela last week, the various people who read and said the prayers. Um, it's all been so inspiring. Mm -hmm. So to your questions, and what do we mean by uh, rethinking engagement? I wondered whether, because it was Valentine's Day today, <laughs> that we were talking about, you know, relationships really <laughs> Well, it's funny you should say that, because when people get engaged, they express a commitment to each other yeah. and an intention. They express the intention to, to spend the rest of their lives together, to connect with each other, mm. if you wish. Mm. And uh, at the heart of this uh, idea of an engagement is just that, how do we all connect with each other? Mm. And when I introduced uh, this series some six weeks ago, there was a recognition of following um, the impact of the coronavirus that all of us are having to rethink so many aspects of the way that we live our lives from day to day. And back then, if you recall, I asked the question, I said, how do we take the light of Christ into this, what feels like, dark new world of uncertainty and restriction and so on. Uh, how do we stay connected with God? How, how do we stay connected with each other? Mm. So at the start of this idea of engagement is this question about how we stay connected. And as lockdown eases, which we hope, don't we, that mm. it will sooner or later, mm. the questions then will emerge about, well, how do we then all re connect? Mm -hmm. How do we all re engage uh, with each other? Mm. How do we re-engage with day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. when so many people haven't seen each other for what feels like well, an eternity now, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And then what might the role of the church be mm -hmm. in all mm -hmm. of that? Mm -hmm. there, there were one or two other things, though, that I think we've learned uh, in the process of, of lockdown, right from, you know, in the whole of the last year, you know, various things that... Um, we've sort of actually started to look at life and look at the world and look at one another in different ways. And I wonder whether there are any particular things that came out of that aspect of learning together. Absolutely. And so our learning, if you wish, falls into uh, two broad categories. Uh, the, the general learning that um, many of us will recognise, actually, I'll share some of those with you, and then some of the specific things that have come mm. through in the feedback. Mm. Mm. And... Um, Generally speaking, our experience of the pandemic um, has reminded many of us about what's important, mm -hmm. what's important in life. For example, we're reminded that at the heart of all that's going on, people matter. Mm -hmm. Community matters. Mm -hmm. During the first lockdown, I don't know whether you recall, uh, when everything stopped, the silence reminded us that the natural world, that, that creation matters and of course that's has a poignancy at the moment as we're all thinking about climate change and the mm -hmm. impact of that mm -hmm. we also discovered the pace matters in slowing down we all noticed things differently and many people have had time to think and reflect whether the pace of life that we'd all got caught up in mm -hmm. is really the be all and end all of everything Mm -hmm. now, is there a less stressful, is there a less frenetic way mm -hmm. to live our life? Mm -hmm. And then here's the really interesting thing. Well, at least I, I think it's interesting. <laughs> you know, as a society, we've rediscovered that God matters. Yeah. And I don't know whether you're aware, but over this last year, a number of national surveys have been done, both religious and secular. And they have confirmed that 95% of people pray. Mm. And I don't know about you, but I just think that that's remarkable. Mm. Of course, they don't all come to church, and that, that, you know, that's absolutely fine. Yes. Uh, and but maybe of a different faith as well. And maybe yes. of a different faith, yes. but, but we pray. Yes. We believe, we hope yes. in something else. And, and I think there's something in that that we just need to be attentive to. Mm -hmm. And then finally we've discovered, and Bishop Peter alluded to this uh, two or three weeks ago, that survival matters, that life really is important. How we treat and care for one another, and of course the planet, does matter. So those are the generalities. Yes. 
And uh, some of the more specific feedback and learning that we've, we've had is, is this. Um, uh, uh, and that is that these rethinking conversations, as they've been, you know, you and I have sat in, I've sat yeah. with others, um, have brought to the fore that, um, that, that conversation yes. uh, matters. Yes. Yes. How we think through stuff, how we make sense of the world around us, yeah. happens most helpfully uh, through conversation, yeah. through dialogue, yeah. through working things out. And I guess that shouldn't really surprise us, should it? <laughs> we, you know, we're not alone on this planet. Yeah. Secondly, um, uh, filming these services in our two churches has reminded us that, that, that connection matters, that certain places remind us that we belong. You know, that belonging matters. We're all rooted mm -hmm. somewhere, and that, and that matters. Yes. It's been interesting, the, the sort of the comments that have come back since we've started coming back into church, just to sort of use the church as the background uh, for our worship. That yeah. has been very important for people. Um, it it yes, has. Something and about sacred space. And, there's something about sacred yeah. space. Uh, there's something about uh, symbolism that matters, not just to our faith and how we... Mm how we worship God, but, mm. but matters to our identities, people who belong, who come from Castle Donington, Lockington or Hemington. Yes, yes. Our, our churches matter, yes, and, yes. and that's important. Yes. Uh, the third thing that people have commented on is how much they miss company, being in the company of others. And we're reminded again, that, I mean, how could we forget, really, that that company matters. And then lastly, people have really appreciated uh, the creativity that they've experienced through this period of worshipping slightly mm -hmm. differently. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess we can conclude from that, that that creativity matters, which perhaps shouldn't surprise us because mm -hmm. human beings are creative beings. Mm -hmm. And any of us who appreciate anything to do with the arts, mm -hmm. uh, which is most of us, I suspect, mm -hmm know that that creativity inspires mm. it feeds the soul doesn't it mm. and uh, th there's something to our being uh, that 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 matters that we are creative mm. and we explore, mm. explore how I, to I, I think I think you know that's been one of the really valuable things for us in this extended period of the pandemic I mean you know to begin with we thought it was just going to be three weeks or you know two yeah. months or whatever yeah. And here we are almost a year um, from the point at which we began to realise that it mm. was going to affect our world and our mm. lives in a totally different way. Mm. Uh, we've been in the process of making things up as we've gone along, mm. but actually discovering things that we would not have discovered otherwise. Um, and there's a sense of... of um, because we've had the time, because we've had... We've had to do it, you know, there's been no blueprint for how we've been able to deal with this. We've had mm. to learn as we've gone along and that mm. actually means that some things that perhaps were beginning to change slowly mm. have had to change much more quickly. Mm. But because of, because of that whole dynamic, it's actually brought new, as you say, new ideas and creativity, new ways of... I have to say that you're getting better at better at actually p putting these services together. Oh, and, you know, <laughs> I know I've been involved in, in, <laughs> in learning how to, to move clips and things like that, but it, because we're so familiar now with watching things on the television, we've had to up our game, you know. We have, uh, and, uh, and again, we need to be attentive to that because it's easy just sitting there watching something on our screen, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And so one of the things that is behind this idea of rethinking engagement is how, when the time comes, mm. do we move beyond our screens yes. and back into real life? Yes. And we'll say a bit more about that in a minute. Okay. Well, I think that the time has come for us to connect with part of, of, of what you've been mentioning. It's time for us to have our first hymn. It is. And I think the first hymn that you've chosen is very appropriate for what we've just been talking about. It's a very lovely, well-known old hymn. And uh, I invite you to stand up and join in. We talked early on about worship is not just a passive thing. It's not just entertainment. It's about an act. And we talk about an act of worship. So let's join together as we sing 
Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your health and salvation. One of the things that has been a constant refrain, although I think um, people are saying it in a different way from the way they did six months ago, is when things get back to normal. People are wanting to move forward, but they're also wanting to get back to normal. Based on the things that we've learned and, and are still learning, I wonder what you think life beyond lockdown life beyond the pandemic mm. will look like yeah and i think we're all asking that question in one way or another aren't we and the honest answer is uh, i don't know i don't think any of us really knows do we and you know some semblance of life uh, will return to, to to normal um uh, for example our freedom of movement hopefully will come back and we'll be able to visit people and go places and travel uh, albeit carefully of course because the reality is we're going to be living with this virus, I suspect, for quite some time. I think so. But then some things have already profoundly changed. You know, for example, you know, the, the shocking loss of life mm. to this coronavirus this last year, you know, um, has, has been awful. Mm. And I think that when our freedoms return, we're going to need to find ways uh, to process our grief, mm. not just our individual grief, but our collective grief mm. as mm. as a community um, and as a nation. And so we will need time and space, and, and, and some of us will need support. Mm. Mm. I think we're also going to need to find ways to reconnect with each other. <laughs> you know, just at the beginning, just, just as at the beginning of lockdown, we all had to adjust to not seeing each other and to locking ourselves away and to staying at home. For many of us, it will now be quite daunting to come back out. Mm. I think it's what our social scientists might now be referring to as a reverse culture shock. Oh, right. <laughs> all these things have a name, don't they? And, you know, of course, most of us will be just so excited to see other people, won't we? Mm. Especially family and friends who have not yeah. seen for a long time. 
But I think a great number of us will also be quite anxious mm, mm. and we will need to be attentive to that. And, and that's older people and also young people as well, I think. I don't think, it, mm -hmm. I don't think age is a factor in this, no, actually. No, I think no. uh, it's, it's to do with being human. Mm, mm. There's something mm. that is about our humanity that, mm. that we've, all, we've all been conditioned to be ultra-cautious about. And of course, that yes. naturally will make us anxious. Yes. And some of us have very good reason for being anxious. Yes. Others of us just, well, we're just not sure, are we? Mm, mm, mm. And that's okay. We just need to be aware of that yes, yes. with each other. It goes so, back to some of the things you were saying. When so don't go and hug everybody. <laughs> <laughs> or ask first, you know, that sort of thing. And so that raises the question, you know, how do we then sort of navigate the way ahead? How do we, how do we re-engage with each other um, when we are allowed to? And you might recall me having referred a, a while ago to a model that... Um, that aid agencies use in response to what are referred to as natural disasters. Mm -hmm. And uh, the model they use is in three phases. Uh, response mm -hmm. as the first phase, recovery, mm -hmm. and then restoration. Mm -hmm. And in the first phase of response is all about how do we deal with the immediacy of the crisis? How do we keep people from further harm? How do we keep them safe? And lockdown in its various forms is how we as a society have responded to the real and present danger of this uh, the coronavirus. And of course now we have the vaccines, don't we, to, to keep people safe, to protect us all from further harm. Then the second phase is the recovery phase, and it's what we do to adjust and to make sense um, of the new reality in which we find ourselves. And with any adjustments, this takes time. Mm. We're not very good as human beings of doing that quickly. Mm. And uh, as I've alluded to already, uh, for a lot of us, this will include the processing of loss. Mm. And this is a multi-layered yes. dynamic. Yes. Um, it's not just about the loss of loved ones. Of course, that's, that's desperately yes. uh, important for us to be able to do that. But it's things like the, the loss of lifestyle, yes. uh, the loss of agency, you know, being able to make decisions and choices that we want to make yes. has yes. been taken away from us, hasn't yes. it? The loss of jobs, you know, we've lost jobs by the tens of yes. thousands, haven't yes. we? The loss of company and friendship. Yes. You and I are lucky, you know, we're in a support bubble, aren't we? And we, yes. we can see each other yes. and, and not worry too much about keeping distance and, and the families involved. We have with pancakes that. on Tuesday. Oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> <laughs> and... And there's a sense as well of a, as a, a loss of how things used to be done. Yes. yes. The loss of time and opportunity. You know, yes. this actually really does affect yes. our younger people, yes. actually. Yes. This sense that somehow um, a section of their lives has been lost forever. Yes. And they really do feel that. Yeah. Yes. And there's a truth in that. And yet at the same time, there are, there are other things that have come out of it, you know, for them. I mean, it, it's very hard again to sort of say well you know in the past so and so and so you know people people were um, deprived of all sorts of other things and yet they survived and they actually lived a good life as you know afterwards so indeed and this touches what we spoke about a couple of weeks ago how do we move from the sense of being a victim of our circumstances yes. to being a survivor yes and one of the things we do is we allow ourselves time and mm -hmm. space mm -hmm to recover, to process. Mm. Mm. We really mustn't underestimate that. Yeah. You know, huge changes have mm. taken place mm. all around us, mm. not just in this nation, mm. but around mm. the world. Mm. And we're having to adjust. And mm. the temptation is to rush this recovery yes. phase, yes. to try and get back to normal as quickly yes. as we can, and, and to fix things, yes. um, to put them back the way we are. Mm. Um, but it's so important that we take seriously uh, this time to recover on the one hand and we just need to be brutally honest mm. on the other mm. and recognise that normal, mm. the normal we all long for, we all had, mm. just is no longer there now. Yes. There are no easy answers to that question, are there? There's no silver bullet, but we're not defeated. Um, no. One of the things that we learned from the early church, and particularly the writings of St. Paul, was that he faced all sorts of disasters, you know, 
um, shipwrecks and, and, and beatings and, and heaven only knows what was thrown at him in, as he carried out his ministry uh, of, of telling people about um, Jesus. But he wasn't defeated. No, he wasn't. And we're going to hear a reading now from um, his second letter to the young church in Corinth, um, in which he actually sort of says, um, we are, we're, we're like fragile clay pots. You know, we yeah. are, we are broken. We are easily broken. We, you know, but, we hurt, but actually, we? It, we, that's right. Mm. Um, and yet sometimes it's when things are broken that we begin to see something of the power and the glory and the splendor of God uh, in our in our deepest, darkest moments. That's sometimes when we discover that God is there. And, um, and what our true mm, gifting yes. is. You know, mm. We are astonishingly gifted we are. and capable as human beings. So let's now listen to that reading. Catherine's going to read it for us. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 6 to 15. The scriptures say, God commanded light to shine in the dark. Now God is shining in our hearts to let you know that his glory is seen in Jesus Christ. We are like clay jars in which this treasure is stored. The real power comes from God and not from us. We often suffer, but we are never crushed. Even when we don't know what to do, we never give up. In times of trouble, God is with us. And when we are knocked down, we get up again. We face death every day because of Jesus. Our bodies show what his death was like, so that his life can also be seen in us. This means that death is working in us, but life is working in you. In the scriptures it says, I spoke because I had faith. We have that same kind of faith. So we speak because we know that God raised the Lord Jesus to life. And just as God raised Jesus, he will also raise us to life. Then he will bring us into his presence together with you. All of this has been done for you so that more and more people will know how kind God is and will praise and honour him. Andrew, you talked about three phases, response, um, recovery. But what about the third phase, restoration? What's this got to do with rethinking engagement in other words where do we go from here mm, that's a very good question well the third phase is all about putting into action what we have learned and what we hope or imagine a life that is different to be now i don't know about you but i don't know clearly what that will look like i have a hint of how much shape it might take but as yet i don't know clearly and that's because we're going to have to work that out mm. together. Mm. And in a sense, the conversations have begun uh, already. Uh, in the Church of England, for example, it's our, and you know, it's our experience here as well, in, in this locality, we're discovering how many people engage with us online. And not just that, but what that means to them. Many are people who, for various reasons, just wouldn't come in person to church. Well, not yet. Maybe mm -hmm. they will. I don't know. So the question is, how do we remain in touch with them? How do we help them navigate their way through life and the questions and meaning that this period has evoked for them? And perhaps help them even take their own tentative steps of faith and journey with God. Another way of looking at it is, you know, as they look through the window, if you wish, at us, what will they see of our life together? What will they hear from us as the people of God saying? And then in this group of churches in particular, 
We've been reminded how important it is to reach out to parents and children mm -hmm. and, of course, to, to young people. And we've found out, and, and, and once we've found out, um, what matters to them in more detail. It might be that we then need to adjust what and when we do things. Mm. And so there's a conversation mm. uh, to be had there. And I think in, in, in some ways, the word engagement could also be participation. Absolutely. So how do people join in this? We are not just passive observers. We're not people who just sort of, you know, do it, you know, as a sort of sideline. We are, there is always that need for people to be involved and participate and part of. Indeed, mm. absolutely. And, and, and we need to find ways of listening to one another. Yeah. Uh, so that people can feel that their voice is being heard, mm. and um, you know we're often just you know, we'll be honest we're just not very good at that a lot of the time, are we? Mm. So, so yes, you're you're right um, about that conversation and about that listening and about finding opportunities to participate. That's right, mm. and I think that that also emphasises the fact that we really do want to hear people's feedback. We Absolutely, do want yeah. people to talk back to us. Um, it's been not, so helpful. Yes, not just to say, oh, that was really good, you know, really enjoyed that, but actually to say, have you thought of such and such? Mm. Um, or what, mm. are, what really is important to me is yeah. whatever. And, and, and so, we're willing to give things a go, aren't we? Exactly. Because one of the, uh, yeah, we've <laughs> touched on it already, one of the other things we've, we've, we've found is that people have really valued this time mm. of creativity. Mm. People have loved this rethinking series mm. and this period of doing things slightly yes, differently. Yes. And I would love us to embrace that in, in our longer term rhythm of mm. our life and worship together. Mm. That'd be really mm. lovely. Mm. But of course we need to balance that as well with remembering that our traditions yes. also matter. We mustn't forget that our faith is rooted in the spirituality and practices of the generations mm. who've gone mm. before us and mm. have handed that faith mm. on to us. So yeah. I feel very strong we mustn't lose sight of, of their faithfulness. Mm. Mm. And yet we also know, don't we, that, that God is a renewing God. Mm. God has given us a remarkable array of gifts and talents to harness and to use. Mm. Not, of course, for our own gain, mm. but, but for the benefit of those around us, for the benefit and well-being of others, mm. you know, for the benefit of our communities. Mm. And, ultimately, to the glory of God. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And so as we mm. enter, you know, as and when, we're not quite there yet, as and when we enter that sort of third phase of restoration, it might be in the latter part of this year, I don't know, or you know, when the vaccines have had time to have effect mm. or when we've all had the opportunity to catch up with our, our family and friends. Even go on holiday. In, in, <laughs> even go on holiday, wouldn't that be lovely? Perhaps as a church mm. at that point through some careful listening and encouraging one another to, to speak and mm. to be heard, we might find refreshed or new or different ways to engage with each other, to engage with our community and of course mm. to, to engage mm. with God. Mm. And who knows where that will lead? Absolutely. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of quite excited about it. Wouldn't it be wonderful if once we're out of lockdown and once people are begun to feel at ease with one another again, this church, this building, our buildings, that are such an important part of our communities and mm. community life and have been for hundreds of years, mm can be places that people feel easy to come to mm. wherever they happen to be mm. in their journey of faith. Absolutely. Whether they come because it's part of their own searching or whether they just feel that, yes, this is a space that they can come into. It isn't just for people who do that kind of thing. One of my mm. dreams is that our buildings will be open, will be unlocked for people mm. just to drop in mm. when they need that that sacred time, that quiet time. Yes, yes. Not just when we put events on, that's be good as well yes. to go back to having concerts and that kind yes. of thing. But just so that people can come in mm. and feel at home, mm. feel at peace. Yes. Well, 
Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. And, and I hope that that's actually engendered other thoughts that you may have as well. Um, and, and please do, as I said mm. earlier on, do, do share them with us. Come and chat with us. We haven't got, we haven't got all the answers. We haven't got any answers. Sometimes it feels like just it, we're all having... We're all having to feel our way, and um, I think you used the analogy a few weeks ago about a sort of, um, it's a new map. Well, we haven't got a map for this. We've turned a page, mm. and, and it's like when you're going on a journey and you turn the, the map page, and suddenly you find that there's nothing marked. You don't mm. know where you are. Mm. We're all finding our way in a way, but... There are, there are always pointers and there are always things that God will show us. Um, so Andrew, I think it's time for us to hear some more music. Would you like to introduce our, introduce our second song? Yes, this, this next song you may not be familiar with. It's, it's, a, it's a brand new song and it's, it's, it's sung beautifully um, and it's a reminder that God is with us through everything that we're going through, through the changing seasons, through what comes to afflict us, and God as the one who's faithful and the bringer of hope. All of our tomorrows. Thank you. at your command the old departs the new year comes and though celestial is your gaze you search and care for all our ways we offer up to you this day and all of our tomorrow guide us through each day oh how we want to follow you come living way our way make clear let perfect love drive out our fear be thou our vision now and here and all of our tomorrow the sun once kissed whose beauty passed behind the clouds let all our fond and longing tears remind us we are pilgrims here we trust you sovereign of our years with all of our tomorrow
we come now to a time of prayer. And at the end of each prayer, when I say, hear us, would you please respond with the words, hear us, good Lord. Hear us. Hear us, good Lord. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people, for our bishops Martin and Gully, for all Christian leaders, and for those who teach and guard the faith. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them. We hold before God the efforts being made around the world to distribute the vaccines, that it may be done so with fairness and equity. Give our leaders the gift of your wisdom and a right discernment in all things. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for our villages, for Castle Donington, Lockington and Hemington, for those who live and work and learn and play here, and for those who pass through. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Hear us. Hear, hear us, us, good, good Lord. Lord. We give thanks that you hear our prayers, and we pray for those who do not yet know you for themselves, and yet who long to seek meaning in their lives. May our ears be open to hear your voice, and our hearts be open to the knowledge of your love in Christ. Hear us. Hear, hear us, good Lord. Lord. We pray for those bowed down with grief, fear or sickness. And in a moment of silence we hold before God those known to us personally. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, good Lord. Lord. We give thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ, remembering especially the family and friends of Pietro Mosconi, Tom Bebbington, Peter Dakin and Eileen Morris. May they know your comfort and peace in their time of mourning and loss, trusting in your promises for them. Hear us. Hear, Hear us, us, good Lord. Lord. And finally, on this Valentine's Day, we pray for all those who have made a commitment to each other in love, that through their love they will be a joy and blessing to others. And as we all seek to reimagine a future when our freedoms have returned, may we do all that we can, can to love, serve and honour one another. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Gathering all our prayers together into one, those spoken and unspoken, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying together. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love, this day and every day. Amen. Thank you for joining us again in this act of worship. We're now going to hear our final song, which looks forward, which looks forward with hope. God says, I'm building a people of power and I'm making a people of praise that will move through this land by my spirit and will glorify my precious name. Let us stand and join in that song of hope and praise together. Come on. 